Hi guys, Brain Scare Lion back with another video and today we're going to be talking SummerSlam. In my opinion, it was a really good show. Uh, one or two matches kind of were a letdown, but all in all, the full show itself was actually brilliant. Let, let's go in and start off with the pre-show. Now the first match that we saw was Andrade Cien Almas and Zelina Vega against Rusev and Lana. There's not really much to say about this match, so I'll just let you know that Andrade Cien Almas and Zelina Vega picked up the win after a distraction by Andrade to Lana. Uh, Zelina hit the roll up and there, there was the win. Pretty much it, it wasn't the best match. Then we move on to Cedric Alexander versus Drew Gulak for the Cruiserweight Championship. This one was a really good match. Uh, the Spanish fly from Cedric Alexander looked amazing. Uh, so yeah, th this was a really good match uh, and it ended with Cedric Alexander walking away with the win and retaining the title. Now we move on to the Revival versus the B team for the Raw Tag Team Championships. Uh, I found it a little bit weird that they put this on the pre-show, uh, but I'm not going to argue with it. It turned into a really good match. Um, a lot of back and forth between bo both teams, both teams like put on a good show here and it ended up finishing after a weird roll up situation where it kept going over and over and over uh, but the B team ended up picking up the victory to retain the titles I 100% agree with this down to the fact that the B team need to keep going steady with this I feel now we move on to the main show and the first match that we had on there was Seth Rollins against Dolph Ziggler for the Intercontinental Championship. Wow, did these two put on a great showing. I love the way that they were able to full on integrate Drew McIntyre and um, Dean Ambrose into this match, having them face off constantly, just n not fighting, just face to face until finally they did end up going after each other. Everything in this match just felt right. Uh, the only problem that I had really was that they didn't have the Dean Ambrose heel turn but uh, I, th even that's fine because we've still got time Dean Ambrose has only just come back so we will eventually see that heel turn it's just a matter of time one amazing spot that I want to talk about is that reverse suplex uh, reverse superplex from Seth Rollins oh, that was picture perfect the winner of this match was Seth Rollins walking away with the Intercontinental Championship once again and I'm guessing he's going to go back to having it defended every week on Raw. Um, so yeah, I'm looking forward to seeing that every week. 100% an amazing match, great way to kick off the show. Next, it's a SmackDown Tag Team Championship match. This was The New Day versus The Bludgeon Brothers. I kind of expected a squash match here, but no, there was a lot of back and forth between all superstars in this, so yeah, it just felt right. The match ended with The Bludgeon Brothers walking away with the titles, but the New Day walking away with a victory uh, due to disqualification after Eric Wo Eric Rowan attacked with the hammer, like the big mallet, and then the carnage just ensued. Th this was the right way to end the match. It, it just felt like it fit the characters well. This next match was the only match of the show that let me down, like of the main show. It was a squash match. It was Braun Strowman against Kevin Owens and Braun Strowman won like in a landslide. That, that's all there is to say about it. It, it. it just pissed me off a bit. Next match that we go on to is the SmackDown Women's Championship between Charlotte Flair, Becky Lynch and Carmella. A lot of great spots during this match, like a lot, mostly between Charlotte and Becky. It kind of felt like Carmella was a little left out on this, but uh, she did manage to pop her face up quite a few times and like get the whole ball rolling basically. This match finished with Becky Lynch putting Carmella into the disarmor and then Charlotte Fleur hitting natural selection onto Becky Lynch to pick up the victory. Now the most interesting part about this was after the fight had even happened. Charlotte was celebrating, Becky just looked upset, uh, she went over to hug her best friend and then attacked her. We got to see a Becky Lynch heel turn. This is brilliant. Like this is gonna push her her like in-ring character like so much. The heel turn from Becky, I see amazing things for it. And the way she went off at Charlotte, like the way she destroyed her. Oh my god, that was amazing. 100% thumbs up from me here. 
Uh, it was so exciting to watch. I was expecting a Becky Lynch heel turn, but that was carnage and I loved it. And the tears, the tears streaming down Charlotte's face just put the big exclamation point on it like these two are best friends and this is what's happened. Now we have the WWE Championship match. This was AJ Styles versus Samoa Joe. Didn't really disappoint this match. A lot of great action between both superstars, which we knew there would be. Playing on the fact that AJ Styles is more agile and playing on the fact that Samoa Joe was more strong and brooding. I do want to point out one fact, that scoop slam from Samoa Joe, the agility and the quickness in that was fucking fantastic. But yeah, this match ended via disqualification. Samoa Joe got the victory because AJ Styles got himself disqualified by unleashing hell on Samoa Joe after Samoa Joe grabbed a mic, spoke directly to AJ Styles' wife and said, I'll be your new daddy. That was amazing, just the way that AJ Styles snapped. It legit looked like he was going to murder Samoa Joe. Yeah, brilliant way to end the match. And it does mean that they're going to push forward with more matches between Styles and Joe, which, again, is going to be brilliant. Next match did what I said it was going to do, and it proved why these two are top superstars and deserve to be treated like two of the top superstars. And this is The Miz versus Daniel Bryan. Both men putting on amazing, amazing offense. The way that they were working the whole The Miz using Daniel Bryan's moves, on moves against him, but Daniel Bryan turning it around on him. I, I just felt like that was perfect. And the ending to the match, again, brilliant. I think we kind of expected it to turn out this way. It ended with Maurice handing The Miz what looked like brass knuckles. And yeah, The Miz getting a sly little dig into Daniel Bryan while Daniel Bryan was going for what looked like a suicide dive. And all I can say is I don't think this is the end and I hope it's not the end. I want to see a lot more from these two. Probably even culminating in a no disqualifications match because it would be great to see that. The next match that we had was Finn Balor against Baron Corbin. I was expecting this to be a really good match, like I thought there'd be great offense uh, b between both superstars, but it ended up turning into a squash match, which I really don't mind considering Baron Corbin faced the demon. As soon as everything just hit, as soon as the lights went down, as soon as like all the smoke started coming up, the excitement hit. We haven't seen him since last year. Yeah, it's been a year since we've saw Finn Balor unleash the Demon King. It did end with Finn Balor like just completely destroying Baron Corbin. But yeah, you could tell just from the fear on Baron Corbin's face. He wasn't expecting the Demon King. He wasn't ready for the Demon King. And he got annihilated by the Demon King. This next match was Jeff Hardy against Shinsuke Nakamura for the United States Championship. Now, the thing with this match is it didn't really feel like we saw the full caliber of these two superstars. These two could put on a great match against each other, but this match didn't really feel like we got to see the full potential. But we did see some amazing spots, especially towards the end of the match. I mean, Jeff Hardy trying to hit that swanton bomb to the outside, cracking down on the ring apron. He just cracked down on the ring apron, and that looked so painful. It did end with... Shinsuke Nakamura picking up the victory and it was mostly down to Jeff Hardy being his own demise. The next match that we had was for the Raw Women's Championship. This was Alexa Bliss versus Ronda Rousey. Now we kind of expected this to be a squash match. We did expect like Ronda Rousey to just unleash hell on Alexa Bliss. But I felt like they did it well. I felt like they did it perfectly because although it may have been a squash match, the mind games and everything played by Ronda Rousey, it was so entertaining to watch. Like she was asking her, are you ready before she hit any move? Just to toy with her. It just felt right and I enjoyed every second of it. And it's, not, it's very rare that I say that about a match where I'm watching Alexa Bliss lose. But yeah, I enjoyed every second of that. And we've got a new women's champion. And finally, we move on to the Universal Championship match. 
This is Brock Lesnar against Roman Reigns. And before the match had even started, Braun Strowman came out with the briefcase, stood in the ring and said, I'm not a coward, I do things face to face. So no matter who wins this match, prepare to get these hands. It, it, it felt like a good start to it. The match started and it started off to an extreme. Roman Reigns pulling out his best moves from the get-go and then Brock Lesnar hitting it straight into a submission. Uh, it, it felt it felt like it was going at a good pace at this point. Brock Lesnar would eventually like let his attention sway from Roman Reigns to Braun Strowman, uh, which turned out to be his demise because Roman Reigns ended up taking the victory and Braun Strowman was taken out by Brock Lesnar so Braun Strowman couldn't cash in on Roman Reigns. I was expecting to be pissed off with the end of this match but Roman Reigns walking away with a victory does mean that we now have a champion who will fight at every pay-per-view so we're going to get to see a lot more of the championship and I'm so happy for that. But yeah that was SummerSlam. Uh, all in all, I'd say it was an amazing pay-per-view. There was literally only the match on the kickoff show, the Lana and Rusev match, and the Braun Strowman and Kevin Owens match. Those were the only two that really let it down. But to say that, the rest of the pay-per-view was absolutely fantastic. So, yeah, I'm not, I'm not calling it a bad pay-per-view at all. As for the forfeits, I lost on SummerSlam. My brother lost on NXT, which does mean when it comes to doing the forfeits, I'm going to be doing the milk challenge and my brother is going to be doing the cinnamon challenge. Uh, so yeah, the, look forward to that video. We're both going to end up in pain afterwards. But yeah, I hope you did like this video and if you did like it, give it a like. Comment down below and let me know what your favourite match of the night was. For me, I would probably have to say it was the Smackdown Women's Championship match. And it's literally because of the way it ended. I'd be looking forward to seeing a heel Becky. Don't forget to subscribe and hit that notification button so you can always stay up to date on my content. And yeah, I will catch you guys in the next one.